In 1775, the Continental Congress created the Chaplain Corps. Under the command of General George Washington, each soldier was required to attend worship service every Sunday. While other armies advanced on their feet, Washington's troops advanced on their knees. It's time for the Chaplain's Report with Caleb Colquitt on tactics. Chaplain's Report today does continue our series in the book of Daniel. Now, we've kind of moved out of the narrative part of Daniel and really moved into the prophecy, the latter half of the book of Daniel. So we're going to go ahead and look into uh, a verse where, just to give you a little bit of context, David is having some kind of sort of dream vision where he is seeing all these fantastic things and trying to interpret them and understand exactly what's going on. And in this dream, he sees four great beasts, a winged lion, a bear, a winged leopard, and what he refers to as a dreadful beast with sharp fangs of iron. Now on this, I don't know why he doesn't give a whole lot of description to the latter one, or at least give some kind of description of what it's like. Maybe it was just so unusual that dreadful beast was all he could come up with and then gave a few descriptors. But nonetheless, this is the vision that David sees, and he sees all these cataclysmic things. And then the Ancient of Days, which is referring to God. The Ancient of Days shows up and is seated at the throne, and all of these things take place. Now, it's important to remember that whenever you're reading apocalyptic literature, that it's not intended literally. That what is going to happen is not that literally in the future that we're going to see these great beasts and, and fantastic things happening, that it's symbolic of a real-world event that is going to happen in the future of, of Daniel's, not necessarily in the future of Daniel's life, but in the future after Daniel has lived. And some of it actually does take place within Daniel's life. We've seen that some of the prophecies that he's already interpreted have had some root, and we've seen some of those events take place, specifically when he interprets the dream about the tree. But whenever we're looking at prophecy, even though I do think that some people make a mistake in putting too much investment in understanding exactly every detail of what each one means and will sometimes even argue and cause disputes within themselves and amongst their fellow brothers and sisters about the actual intended meaning of the prophecy, there is something that ties all of this together and it's actually found within the book of Daniel itself right here in Daniel 7, 13 through 14. I kept looking in the night visions and behold, with the clouds of heaven, one like a son of man was coming, and he came to the Ancient of Days and was presented before him, and to him was given dominion, glory, and a kingdom, that all the peoples, nations, and men of every language might serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion, which will not pass away, and his kingdom is, the, is one which will not be destroyed. So there's a couple of things that we really need to note here. First of all, for anybody that is familiar with the language of the New Testament, it doesn't take a very big leap to understand that what he's talking about is the coming of the Christ. Because if you're looking at the words and the verbiage that he's using specifically, they're talking about his dominion being everlasting, that its kingdom will never pass away, it will never be destroyed. All of those things fit in, especially if you're reading the book of Matthew where it talks about the kingdom and the kingdom of Christ coming. If you're looking at that, it is not very difficult to understand that the prophecy is specifically referring to Christ. And it's important to remember that this is well over 400 years before Christ lived. That Daniel is predicting all of these things, that all of this language is coming about, and that all of this is being pinned down before anybody even knew who Jesus was or what he was going to be like. And yet Daniel is able to do this and is able to explain all of this long before the coming of the Christ. Which is amazing when you think about the, the level of detail and everything that comes in. But it's also important to note that I think it ties everything together. 
with a continuous theme. Now, I think that it's important for us to look at the prophecy, to look at the uh, apocalyptic literature and understand it, because God would not have given it to us if he didn't want us to study it and to draw meaning from it. God doesn't just arbitrarily hand us a bunch of stuff, hey, this was just stuff that was floating around in my head, try to decipher it if you can. No, God gave us this stuff specifically because he believed that there were important messages contained within it. God gave us this stuff for our spiritual enrichment and to be able to grow closer to him. So I'm not saying the meaning of scripture or the meaning of prophecy is not important. I think it's of the utmost importance. But I also believe that we need to remember when trying to understand that is one thing that is always clear throughout all of apocalyptic literature is the theme that eventually God wins. That regardless of the comings and goings, regardless of the political upheaval that happens within this kingdom or that kingdom, which we'll get into a little bit later, these different beasts represent, that at the end of the day, when all is said and done and you bring it all together, the most important message is God's kingdom prevails. That despite everything going on on this physical earth, the spiritual kingdom of God, the one that was established by his son, the son of man, as it is referred to right there in the book of Daniel, and a phrase that Jesus refers to himself as over and over again, that the Son of Man, king, his kingdom, is one that is never destroyed and transcends all nations and all time. And that is a really humbling notion. To think that we serve a king whose dominion is everlasting and can never be destroyed. It really does remind you of what a powerful God that we have. and reminds us that no matter what happens on this earth, no matter all the circumstances or the dangers that may befall us, the persecution that we can endure, that we can take solace in knowing that whether we win a political fight or lose a political fight or a nation turns completely away from God, which I am afraid that our nation may do at some point, that even if that does happen, we are still a part of a kingdom that is not going to be destroyed because its builder and maker is the Son of God himself. And as long as he is a part of that kingdom, as long as he is the king over those people, we're going to be just fine. Because we belong first and foremost, more so even to our country, to a great kingdom that was not built with hands and will last forever because its foundation is spiritual. Stay the course, friends. Hey, y'all know I'm a stats and numbers guy, so here's some fun facts for you. People that subscribe to the Tactics YouTube channel are 200% more satisfied with their online video content and 400% more likely to be able to speak intelligently about politics and religion with somebody they know. Also, four out of five people that subscribe to the Tactics YouTube channel live healthier, more fulfilling lives. And that fifth guy was just a social justice warrior with a stick up his butt. Also, 82% of the statistics on the internet, totally made up.